Petra Lang, we are so happy to have you back here in Oslo. The last time was uh, Mahler second and third uh, with Yuka Pekka Saraste. Our yep. seasoning op- season opening, 2009? 2009, I think, yeah. Yes. This time you're bringing your own repertoire <laughs> even more. <laughs> I know Mahler is uh, very close to your heart also. Better than Greta Demrung. Yeah, I think there has been a Mahler time. As I think for a young singer, that is that is good for vocal and uh, mental development. Mm. And uh, yeah, Wagner, this is maybe grown up music or when the voice just has developed a little bit in a heavier or in a more grown up direction. Let's say that it's say that way. Mm. Yes, but you have done uh, the Brengene uh, mm. many years. Oh, I sing Wagner now since 92. I started with singing one of the Walküres in Walküre and in 94 I sang my first Götterdämmerungs Waldraute and then the next year Brangene came and Fricka came and so you can say nearly 24 years of singing Wagner. <laughs> Isn't that the very early also for a voice or... I think it depends. If you have the vo- the right voice character, mm. then it just works. Mm. Then it just works. And I have to say, I tried at the very beginning, I really tried to mix it. So in my first years, I still sang Mozart or Rossini, for example. I, mm. sang, I sang Rosina in the same year when I sang my first Fricka and Waldraute. So when I did my first ring cycle, I had Octavian, Cherubino, <laughs> Dorabella and Rosina in the same, really in the same season. So I think that is, that it's, is very helpful for a young singer. Hmm. But, but you still uh, do that or is it not possible for the voice or is it, yeah? No, I think nobody would engage me. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> I think also it's an age question. I think for these real young uh, lyric uh, parts, you really have to be in your 20s or even early 30s and then it's over. That's just norm- the normal way how, how life goes. <laughs> yeah, but Verdi, operas or Puccini? I, I sang Verdi. I sang Fenena and Eboli and Amneris. I sang this. But it's, I must say, it's, I do have a voice for the German repertoire. Mm. And this is why I think it's, nowadays it's difficult that people wouldn't cast you for the Italian repertoire. <laughs> In former times that has been different. So my old, my old teacher Ingrid Viona, Norwegian too, <laughs> Uh, my f- my teacher of 17 years, she sang, she has had the chance in her career to sing a lot of Italian repertoire, many Italian roles, besides the Wagner repertoire and the Strauss repertoire. And I think that was is very, very helpful and healthy for the voice. Hmm. But I tried just to combine it with concert repertoire, so singing a lot of Mahler, singing recitals, singing masses or other symphon- symphonic works or s- just songs with orchestra which is I think also helpful just to to work or to sing in different styles. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, always helpful I mean in the orchestra we are forced to every week yeah. to play so many different styles and yeah. It's probably the same for you singers. Yeah, that you're not stuck in one repertoire. Mm. Because maybe then you are the expert for this one repertoire. But I think uh, the world is so big and there are so many, many things to discover. Mm. And I think it's also good and important. And I, and it may, uh, for me, it's it's fun just to de- discover new things or de- to, to try out new things. I think that's, that's that's a pity that nowadays you are then the expert for Mozart or for mm. Verdi or Verdi or for Wagner. Yeah, you tried a new thing, uh, new thing this summer. You you were Isolde. Yeah, I yeah. sang my first Isolde in Bayreuth at Bayreuth Festival. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was big fun. <laughs> yes. So, but you've singing Wagner twenty four years. Why why wait so many years for Isolde? Does it it's a question really of development. I mm. have to say that uh, when I had my breakthrough in 
2000 with Prangene at Covent Garden at the Royal Opera, they already offered me uh, Isolde and I mm. said, no, that's just, it's too early, I just cannot do it. And I must say, I was very, very careful in my whole career. And my teacher, Ingrid Bjorner, she always said, the most important word a singer has to use is the word no. Mm. And it just, is so, look, Isolde is such a long role for a singer and you just have to uh, to find so many colors and you have just to have the strength to go through that role so it's singing Isolde is is maybe the the longest role for a uh, for a female singer so so it differs quite it much really uh, from Brangene uh, yeah, yeah absolutely it's yes. Isolde is four times Brang four times Brangene mm. And you need the top and you need the lower register, so, and it's just, it's acting wise, it just, dem it's a little bit more demanding uh, than singing Brangene. And I was also on the safer side, building up a career. Mm. And I must say, all the roles which did come at the right point in my career, so that I really had the chance to, to develop right. Mm. Fantastic. Um, you come back to Ingrid Bjorner and of mm -hmm. course I believe that you must have a special relationship to Norway through Ingrid Bjorner. How has she inspired you in your career? She was really my mentor over 17 years mm. and it was not love by first sight so I was uh, <laughs> in 98 <laughs> I did audition for a master class for Hans Hotter for mm -hmm. the famous Hans Hotter and I only made it into the class of Ingrid Bjorne and I said this Norwegian soprano what at, the, at this time I was dreaming of Cherubino, Dora Bella and things like that and doing a lot of songs and I said what the heck why did they put me into in the class of this Norwegian soprano I have no clue I, I don't want to sing Wagner what is this but during the class that was just that it was uh, yeah love by second side it was I really discovered that this is just the person, it, it just fit together. Mm. She helped me, she knew things I should do before I even did them and said, okay, study this role, we do this, this will come. I said, I have no clue. She said, mm. we, we studied, wait, just wait. And she was always early preparing me for the roles and for the repertoire and really giving me the right, uh, the right, knowledge to do to do things and even now I remember and I rem it, it reminds me on things Ingrid was saying I said yeah it's now it comes now it's right maybe 20 years before F, uh, that was just too early but now I can use it mm. what did you study with her I studied with her she uh, I, I w came nearly every summer for 10 14 days to stay with her at her uh, cottage on the, at the Oslo Fjord to study and mostly when she was in Munich or in Hamburg or somewhere in Germany we met or then I came a second time to, to work with her in Oslo so and many many times hmm. she solved problems over the phone <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> well, that's uh, it's wonderful to have a, and important to have a mentor like that and uh, uh, I know you probably have many secrets but uh, one secret that I learned reading about you is that you are a violinist. Mm -hmm. It's no secret. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's no secret. <laughs> but it's uh, not. It's very unusual that you have two instruments like like that on a high level. You actually teach, were teaching violin for mm -hmm. many years. Yeah. yeah. I must say, I always say it's helpful if you can read music as a singer. That's <laughs> yeah. really helpful, and. Uh, so my singer career or education started when I was 22 so till that mm -hmm. age I already played a lot of chamber music I played in the orchestra I was member of a, a German youth orchestra um, Landesjugendorchester not yeah. Westfalen so that's mm -hmm. quite uh, something you to reach it was just on a, on a good level to play and I think it's it's fun learning studying music and the more you you know the more uh, or the the easier you can also react if you are on stage or if you are 
performing. And for example, I study my roles always with, with a score, with the orchestra score, mm. so that I really know what instrument is, is playing. So if I know I have to, for example, in Mahler, a Lied von der Erde, it's playing with the oboe or, or singing with the, with a the flute, then you know how to color the voice. Mm. And it's I think it's the same for mostly, for nearly every, every repertoire, and it just helps. Yeah, so you, you think uh, <coughs> instrumental mm -hmm. while you study absolutely. your roles. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm. Because sometimes really it helps you if you know, okay, I have to wait for the oboe, or I have to wait till the violins play there. Oh, now this is the, the uh, I have to wait for the violas, or I have mm. to blend together with them. That it really helps, and it sometimes it really makes life for a singer, or for me, much mm. more easier. Worse. And was it the violin that brought you into music? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you didn't, I mean, we always sing, but you didn't start singing uh, education before, after. No, uh, I, I sang my whole life, let's yeah. say this. My, my parents, yeah. there, are, there are pictures of me as a little child where, where I'm singing or stealing my grandmother's hats and my grandmother's um, tableware. And I was just wrapping around and, and pretending this wear uh, is a long, uh, a long dress, mm. or long dresses or uh, stealing her hats. And uh, yeah, that was just fun. And running through the house, pretending, playing a princess or I don't know what character. But uh, I, st I started with the violin at the age of seven or eight. And then the violin, that was just my, yeah, mm. that was just my, my, my instrument. Uh, let's go back to a little bit to the Götterdämmerung that we are doing. Uh, we're doing excerpts that about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the opera in itself is... Uh, Four uh, hours something, yeah, four, four hours, hours something, four fifteen, four twenty, depending on the yeah. tempo of the maestro. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, do you miss anything now? Uh, do you miss your colleagues, or uh, do you think that we gain something not doing the entire thing? Or it must be very different. I mean, the only different thing <laughs> I I figured out. Mm. Uh, at the end, Brünnhilde is saying, Ruhe du Gott. She, she means, rest, rest in peace, Father Wotan. And I always, when I was singing, the, I, I started early singing uh, this Schlussgesang, the so-called Schlussgesang, uh, the final scene in concert. And I always was thinking, oh, nicely about Wotan. Just rest in peace, my dearest father. And once... I have just after I've I've sang the whole cycle and the other uh, Brunhildes, then at the end, I'm in such I have such an anger, I'm really angry about him because he is the one who uh, who caused all the, <laughs> all her problems, mm -hmm. and I must say in during the shows or when I sing a ring cycle I sing it differently I have all the aggression uh, against uh, uh, Father Wotan who at the end is not for her that positive, for me, not that positive mm. figure. So this mm, mm, makes for me a, a huge difference. Mm. Okay, you go differently into the, into the final scene if you have sung the whole piece before, because you are really after the second act you are I, I'm exhausted because mm. of my anger throwing <laughs> at <laughs> at Siegfried and this just it's then for the concert to bring you into the mood mm. this is then just different so it it takes more energy mm. to be in the mood or a different approach to be in the mood in the right mood for example, I did it many, many times with Maestro Janowski. And at the beginning when I sang this Schlussgesang, I was always happy to sing it and really proud to sing it. And he always said, just stop your Rheinische Frohnatur, just stop, uh, stop laughing, <laughs> it's not fun. And since I haven't done the whole piece, I, it was difficult to understand mm. in what, what he meant. Yes. but. Uh, now it's just a different approach then. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, the audience, they seem to, I mean, always if we put up the ring or a Wagner upright, will be sold out in 
mm. no time. It's, I mean, it, people are crazy with it. But for people that have never heard of Wagner, they can also be, you know, kind of scared almost uh, that, oh, it's so heavy. And what would you say to our audience that, you know, oh, what is this Wagner? Why should they come and listen to this Goethe Demeron? First of all, it's beautiful music. And I think what always the problem or the thing with Wagner is if you just let him introduce into your soul, you might be lost. Mm -hmm. I think it's an he speaks to our emotions and depending on how we feel, where we stand at that moment, it might carry us away mm. or it might even put us into, f into fear. That could, could also happen. But most of the time, and I think this is, this is why it is sold out so easily, is because of really giving you emotions you might not have in in real life because these emotions set free by this music are I think I always think bigger than life mm. I think that's that's maybe the the big secret also of his of his music without saying and everybody can can go go how far he wants to go with that music and allow how far his emotions can be driven away well, we certainly are carried away <laughs> with your voice and your personality here. We are so happy to have you <laughs> back in Oslo. So we're looking forward much. to the concert and uh, good luck with the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.